in the 2D conduction module, there have been questions about why is the mesh view showing a 3D model even though we have set the properties to 2D and we drew a, a, a rectangle, which is a 2D model. Let me explain that. First, let me go to the um, to to the course course itself and go to the discussion tab and search for say mesh is 3D. And here are some of the questions that are related to that. Uh, let me pick this particular question. And Rohit Patil um, is asking that, hey, you know, I drew a 2D object and answer is showing me a 3D model view. To explain that, let me first go to um, Workbench. And under Geometry, if I look at Properties, the analysis type is set to 2D. That means our mathematical model is 2D. Next, let me go to Mechanical. And in Mechanical, when I look at the mesh, I'll see something like that. And that's just a display um, issue. So what, what ANSYS is doing is, in fact, if I look just at the geometry, it's just showing me a 2D object. Uh, but for the surface body, I need to give it a thickness. And under the mesh view, it's using that thickness of one um, to extrude whatever you have drawn. Um, essentially, what you have is a 2D mesh and show a three-dimensional object. And this happens, you know, if you go into the isometric view. So if you might not see this if you're looking along Z, but if you're looking along the isometric view, you might see something like that. And you can actually turn off this display, turn off the display of the thickness. So I can go under view and deselect thick shells and beams, and then I'll get um, a 2D, you know, mesh. And perhaps this is less confusing. You drew a 2D object, um, you know, or Domain is 2D, so the geometry, you know, you get a 2D view, and under mesh, you get a 2D. And if I, and all it's doing is it's using the thickness. So if I change the thickness to 0.5 and then go to mesh and turn on thick shells and beams, you can see, you know, that changed the view. And to explain, you know, what exactly this means, let me go back to the the framework of what's under the black box. So the physical problem is always 3D. In this case, it's you know conduction in in a 3D object, and we assume you know we have made the 2D assumption, which means our mathematical model is 2D, and we have assumed that temperature can vary only in x and y, and there can be no z variation. So physical problem is 3D, the mathematical model is 2D, and that is why when we gave it the domain over which we want answers to solve the governing equations, we gave it a 2D domain. And then you get you know, um, the temperature along that 2D domain at the nodes, and in post-processing for the reaction, you need to give it a thickness. The thickness doesn't affect anything else. Um, and that thickness is used to go from the flux to a heat flow. So to convert the heat, flow, heat flux to a heat flow, you need a thickness. And in the display, ANSYS is using the thickness and taking this and using the thickness and showing you a 3D object, <laughs> okay? That's what is happening over here. By the way, um, the reason you need a thickness is, uh, you know, let me explain that actually by going to mechanical. So let's say you have an essential boundary condition here and you have set the, um, the temperatures at the nodes. And then, you know, as we have discussed, you will get a corresponding heat flux from that, from the weak form, and that, and the reaction is basically coming from that. Let's say, you know, for simplicity, the heat flux is constant along that boundary. So you have a heat flux. And then ANSYS will take that area 
So it'll take that heat flux and then multiply by that area to get a heat flow. And then you add it up for all these elements and you will get the what it reports as a reaction. And this is going to be at the essential boundary conditions where you set the temperature. If that's not clear to you, I would recommend that you go back and review the videos and the big ideas in FEA um, where I talk about the, the reaction.